What is going on everybody? It is your boy Nothing Skills, and today I'm bringing you guys another division build video and today's build video is going to be on it's going to be the build that you saw me using in my last sniper montage. So if you guys watched that last sniper video, this is the build. Make sure if you guys enjoyed this video, you guys smash a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, first time watching the video, hit the subscribe button. And if you have any questions after watching this video, use the comment section down below. So let's get into the build. You're going to see right off the bat, I'm running a five piece dead eye and a gold backpack. And we'll get into exactly which backpack I'm running in this build in just a second. The first thing we're going to go over is my primary firepower is 318,000. That's firearms of 10,100. My toughness is 340,000. That's stamina of 2,900. And my skill power is 114,000. That's electronics of 2,900. Now, why do I choose to run a five piece dead eye versus a six piece dead eye? Well, let's get into that right now. So set two bonus is going to give me a 40% initial bullet stability. Set bonus three is what we're really looking at here is this 20% marksman rifle critical hit damage. Set bonus four, dead eye when zoomed in, marksman rifle loses headshot bonus but gains 50% critical hit chance when out of cover. Now when you're in cover, you get that 100% critical hit chance. That's why being in cover with dead eye is very crucial and very key. Set bonus five is going to give me an additional 40% initial bullet stability so I'm at an 80% total initial bullet stability plus I'm going to get an additional 20% marksman rifle critical hit damage so running the five piece is going to give me an additional 40% critical hit damage and since I'm going to hit that critical hit damage 100% of the time when I'm in cover this is very key now the six piece is where I say it's very situational when zoomed, getting headshot kills with marksman rifles will increase critical hit damage by 20% every second to a maximum of 100% and will increase stability by 100%. This lasts for 10 seconds or when you're no longer zoomed. So that's why I say that's really situational right here because a lot of the time you zoom in, you zoom out so that way you can find your targets and you'll lose this stack every time. Now we're going to break down how I have this build exactly set up. So for the chest piece, it's rolled firearms. The major attributes are health enemy armor damage and ammo capacity so I really recommend you stacking health in every place you can when you don't need to stack critical hit damage and then of course you want to stack enemy armor damage throughout this build because even though enemy armor damage doesn't affect PvP like it used to it still works good on builds like this where you're stacked 10,000 firearms and you don't need to have any type of survivability and your main focus is to put out as much damage in the shortest amount of time possible for the mods I'm running firearm mods with health and that's why I was telling you guys if you guys can stack health in the places that you don't need to stack critical hit damage you'll have a little bit more toughness in that way in case a player does rush you you have a chance of getting away for the mask it's rolled firearms the major attribute is enemy armor damage just like I told you you want to stack that enemy armor damage so I have enemy armor damage on the chest enemy armor damage on the mask and then for the minor attribute that's really up to you now for the knee pads it's rolled firearms the major attribute here is going to be critical hit damage like I told you you don't want to sacrifice critical hit damage for health even though having health on this build does help you out a little bit when you want to push away from players when they are chasing you you don't want to give up critical hit damage because stacking critical hit damage on this build is going to make you two shot those players you can't really one shot anybody in the game unless it's another sniper and they're running a reckless chess piece but we'll talk about that in a little bit for the minor attributes i'm running 30 percent disorient resistance 29 percent burn resistance and 28 percent bleed resistance for the mods i'm running fire mods with health and then performance mod with two percent pulse critical hit damage that's where you do want to gain a little bit more critical hit damage with the pulse and then putting these pulse critical hit damage two percent performance mods will help you for the holster now for the major attribute i have skill haste on here this is where you guys can really play with it a little bit you can put some health on here you can put some reload speed that's up to you that's really your decision i wanted to get my skills back a little bit quicker and since my skill power is 114,000. I figured with having 7% skill haste, that might help me out just a little bit. It's minor, but it's better than nothing. For the mods, I'm running those performance mods with post critical hit damage. So I'm already at an additional 4% post critical hit damage just for having these mods on my build. For the gloves, the road firearms, the major attributes are critical hit damage, marksman rifle damage, and then I have critical hit chance on here. This is the one talent I would love to switch. I don't want that 6% critical hit chance because when I'm in cover, I'm at 100% already. So it's a wasted 6% critical hit chance. Now, where I would like to get rid of this 6% critical hit chance is I would love to put enemy armor damage on here. So if I had another pair of dead eye gloves and I had critical hit damage, marksman rifle damage, and enemy armor damage, that would be the god roll that you're looking for. Now for the backpack, 
it is road firearms and the talent on this backpack it's a specialized backpack it adds 200 percent of your firearms and stamina to skill power and that's why my skill power is at 114,000 with only electronics of 2900 so my pulse is going to be stronger my booster shots going to be stronger so i have a chance of getting away i just hit that much harder and you'll see in a second my skills how fast they come back how much better they are with having this backpack on there I highly recommend if you guys are going to run a dead eye build run this instead of a reckless chess piece because remember a reckless chess piece yes you'll hit eight percent harder but say i'm sniping against another sniper who's running a reckless chess piece i'm going to hit him for ten percent harder because remember you hit eight percent harder but you take ten percent incoming damage with me just running a specialized backpack he's going to hit me for eight percent harder but i'm going to hit him for ten percent harder so the major attribute on here are 9% critical hit damage. Just like on the knee pads, you want to stack that critical hit damage on this build. The minor attribute is burn resistance. And then for the mods, I'm running fire mods with health. Like I said, firearms with health throughout this build helps my toughness out. And then, of course, those performance mods with 2% pulse critical hit damage. Now I have two more here, so I'm at 8% pulse critical hit damage. So every time I pop my pulse, additional 8%. So you can see little by little little by little little by little we're going to be hitting really hard and our critical hit damage shots are going to be out the roof now the snipers that make this build are the m700 carbons and i have two of them but they have different talents and we'll go over what talents i'm using now i'm not going to break down each one of these on how i have them modded i'll just talk about one of them because they're modded the same exact way so the first one has 169 percent headshot damage remember headshot damage is taken away once you're in cover because you're at 100 percent critical hit chance and you'll just hit that critical hit damage shot the base damage on this is 172,000. now the talents that i really recommend you running these two talents you have to run deadly critical hit damage is increased by 15 percent since i'm gonna hit critical hit damage shots 100 percent of the time having that extra 15 percent critical hit damage on my weapon is gonna make me hit that much stronger i love having prepared on here because 95% of the time, if you're a sniper and you're in a good position, you're going to be 30 meters from the target. So you're going to automatically get damages increased by 15% when further than 30 meters from the target. So always have deadly, always have prepared. I feel like those are the two main roles you should have on this build. Now for the final talent, this is the talent that I have switched. So on the M700 Carbon, both of them I have deadly and prepared. But on the first one, I have elevated. Increase your damage by 10% when elevated more than 1.2 meters above your target. So if you're a sniper who can find position and always be above your target, elevated is the one that I love using. So whenever I can get into a good position and I'm above my target, I have this M700 Carbon. Now, if I know I'm on a map that there's not a lot of places where I can get above my target, I use my second M700 Carbon. I always have two because if I'm above my target, I swap the one that has elevated if I'm not above my target, then I use this one. And the big difference between this one and that one is this one has competent. So weapon damage is increased by 10% for 15 seconds after using a skill. So when I pop my booster shot, I get competent active. When I hit my pulse, competent is active. So if I space those out right, I should have competent at least for 30 seconds, right? Now, if I'm trying to get the hardest hitting sniper shot because I know there's not a lot of players around, there's only one, then yeah, I'll pop my pulse. I'll hit my booster shot, competent will be active, and I'll try to hit as hard as I can. So let's go see how I have these snipers modded. So for the scope, I'm running a C79 scope, probably my favorite sniping scope to run. This is going to give me 19% critical hit damage. It has 2.5 stability and 2% accuracy. You don't need to have anything on this build that has headshot damage or critical hit chance. So that's why having stability and accuracy is going to be a better role to have on here than having a C79 scope that has critical hit damage, chance, and headshot damage. For the suppressor, it has critical hit damage, stability, and accuracy again. Just like on the scope, you don't need headshot damage, you don't need critical hit chance. Stability and accuracy is the way you want to go. For the underbarrel, I'm running a small grip. It has critical hit damage, it has stability, and then it has reload speed. The reload speed helps me get back into battle faster. And then I have that extended magazine with magazine size. You want to have critical hit damage instead of critical chance because I know a lot of us use critical chance on our ARs when we're running our builds but you on your extended mag for your sniper is the one time you're going to want that critical hit damage and then of course i have reload speed on here so i have reload speed on the extended mag the small grip and then stability and accuracy throughout this build so that is how i really recommend you guys running this m700 carbon mm -hmm. so for the skills i'm running a recon pack and a lot of you guys might say why are you running that pulse over the scrambler or over the tactical scanner well the recon pack is going to come back every 33 seconds and it lasts for 20 seconds so for 13 seconds is the only time I'm not going to have this pulse. And this pulse is going to give me almost 20% critical hit damage. Now the scrambler gives me 18% critical hit damage. So almost 2% less. It comes back every 45 seconds. 
and it lasts the same as my recon pack. It blocks other agents' posts against you. As a sniper, you really don't have to really worry about that too much. So I don't really feel like this one is really beneficial to dead eye snipers. Now the one you could run is the tactical scanner damage is increased when attacking any hostile targets identified by the pulse scan. So you're gonna hit a little bit harder when you do pop this pulse. Plus it's gonna give you 21% critical damage comes back every 50 seconds. So you can see the big difference between how fast it comes back. I just feel that having the recon pack, you can use it more often so, so you get that benefit of getting that additional 20% critical hit damage. So that's why I choose the recon pack. Some of you might want to run this tactical scanner. It's really up to you on how you want to run your build. Now for this build, your goal is to hit as hard as you can, as quick as you can. So having a pulse and then having a booster shot because booster shots temper increase your damage when you pop it. That's what we're using it for. We're not worried about the damage resistance that's also increased. It's going to still heal me. It's going to heal me for 54,000, which isn't bad. It'll heal me a little bit, not a lot, but it still will heal me. But I'm really using it for that temper increased damage. Now for the talents. The talents I love running this build is critical save. Use a make hit during low health to increase damage resistance by 20% for 10 seconds. I like having strike back on here, reach low health to reduce active skill cooldowns by 20%. So every time you do really reach low health, it'll help your skills come back a little bit quicker. The one talent a lot of you might not use is tactical advance, complete a cover to cover move to increase weapon damage by 2% per meter covered for five seconds for up to 30% damage. And then I always like running precision on most of my builds, even my dead eye builds, because even when I hit my headshots, I'm gonna pulse them for 10 seconds. So I'll get that benefit of that critical hit damage every time I do headshot them. So if we go into my character, you're gonna see my critical hit chance is 6% and that's because of the gloves. You wanna have this at 0%. You don't need to have any critical chance on this build. So on those gloves where I have that 6% critical chance, put that enemy armor damage. My critical hit damage is maxed out at 175%. So pretty good, 175% on critical hit damage is gonna hit people really, really hard. My headshot damage is 169%. My accuracy is 4%, stability is 7%. And then look at my reload speed time. It's a little bit better because I do have reload on the extended mag and then on the underbarrel at 2.9. And that's pretty much it, guys. That is how I run my five-piece Deadeye, the sniper build that you guys saw me go off on my last sniper video. If you guys have any questions on this video, use the comment section down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up. If you guys are new to my channel, first time watching the video, hit that subscribe button. Remember, I am going to start live streaming on my second channel. If you guys haven't went over there and subscribed, it's nothing but skills gameplay. So youtube.com forward slash nothing but skills gameplay. I just want to say thank you guys again. We hit 7 million, 7 million views on this channel in one year. We're up to 57,000 subscribers one year so one year guys we're gonna have a celebration stream soon on this channel right here this channel right here will have a one year celebration stream soon and without you guys this wouldn't be possible so thank you guys again for all the support and as always if you don't see me in last stand if you don't see me in skirmish if you don't see me in the dark zone it's only a matter of time nothing but skills is out